Whit Sundays, a paradise located in the heart of the Great Barrier Reef. In this video, we will be sharing with you our top things to do in this region. We finally made it to the Hill Inlet. <laughs> this place is beautiful. There's a reason why millions of people from around the world have this place on their bucket list. But make sure you stick around to the end to learn about some places that you may not have even considered to visit in this region. It's the Big Mango! <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with one of the most famous spots in the Wet Sundays, the Hill Inlet. One of the most magical spots in all of the Whit Sundays. This is usually the shot that you can find tagged as the Whit Sundays all over social media and in every single travel agent. The naturally made sandbanks making swirling patterns in the turquoise blue ocean. It's a sight that we will not be forgetting anytime soon. What you may not know is that this location is only accessible by boat. We had to do quite a bit of research to find out there is only one boat company that holds the license to have direct access to the stunning and iconic Hill Inlet Beach. We got picked up from our accommodation in Airlie Beach to go to the pier, where we then got onto a relatively small boat holding up to a maximum of 25 to 32 passengers. After some fun on the waves, we ended up at the famous Hill Inlet viewpoint. Honestly, the videos do not do this place justice. And not only did we have the luxury of seeing it from the viewpoint, but we were taken directly onto the sand dunes. On the way back, we stopped at a couple snorkeling spots where we swam with some of the most amazing marine life. This experience will set you back at $160 per person, but it does include the use of wetsuits, snorkel gear, flippers, and also includes a light lunch at the Hill Inlet. It was probably one of the best activities that we did in the Whitsundays, and we feel it is definitely worth the price. While we are talking about the Hill Inlet, let's talk about another must visit that's close by. Whitehaven Beach. Luckily, our trip to Whitehaven Beach lived up to every expectation. It has often been awarded as the best beach in Australia. The silica sand is so white and doesn't retain any heat, so even on the hottest of days, you can walk across it barefoot without burning your feet. This sand is like powder. It's just so soft. If you didn't already know, the Hill Inlet is in fact the very tip of the north end of Whitehaven Beach. However, most tour operators will drop you off on the south end. There are different boat companies that can come to Whitehaven Beach. We visited with Cruise Whit Sundays, which given the chance, we probably would have chosen a company that offers a smaller boat with less people, but we still had a great time when we we're on the beach itself. You can go off, do your own thing, go for a swim or go for a walk to the Whitehaven Beach lookout, but not to be confused with the Hill Inlet lookout. The beach itself is pretty long at just over seven kilometers, so it was easy to find a nice quiet spot. We only had a couple of hours on the beach, which for us wasn't quite long enough. We did the half day tour, but there may be other tours that allow a longer time actually on Whitehaven Beach. It really is one of those must do places when you go to the Sundays. Number three on our list is Lake Proserpine. We had never even heard of Lake Proserpine until we started looking through the Sundays Instagram page. Since we are traveling in our bus, it seemed like the perfect place to spend a couple of nights in the region off the beaten track. All good? I was getting chatted up by two people. Oh, I bet you were. Over there. <laughs> They're like, oh, aren't you a bit of a dish? I was like, oh, yes, I am. Let's go find a lovely little spot. It's approximately a 40 minute drive from Ellie Beach and seems like it has undergone a major upgrade to its facilities. There are no bays, it's just rock up, park where you can find a free patch of grass, which is the kind of camping that we love. The views of the lake at sunset were so beautiful. We just highly recommend a quick stop here. So we are here at Lake Proserpine where we will be for the next two nights. We arrived pretty late last night, so it was too late to check ourselves in at the kiosk. However, I just did all that this morning really easy really straightforward and it only cost eight dollars per person per night so one of the cheaper spots to stay and the view that you get is absolutely insane because we are just meters away from the actual lake itself rather magical to wake up to this morning cheers guys bye bye lake cross of pine next on our list is hamilton island
you can find our full review of this island in our other vlog linked here, where we cover accommodation, restaurants and activities in more detail. But to give you a quick overview, here's a summary of our time here. Hamilton Island is the largest inhabited island in the Whit Sundays, where we spent four days exploring. First up, let's talk about getting here. You can either fly directly to the island or you can get a ferry transfer from Ellie Beach, which is what we did. A return ferry ticket cost us $61.90 and the journey takes approximately one hour. With plenty of different accommodations to choose from, you are spoilt for choice. We opted for the Refue Hotel and quickly made some friends on our balcony. He likes you. <laughs> One of the perks of staying at this hotel was that it gave us the option to use many of the other resort pools dotted around the island. In terms of getting around, everything is pretty much within walking distance, but if you are feeling a little lazy, then the golf buggies can be rented. This was definitely the preferred mode of transport for most. But there is also a free bus shuttle service which takes you around to all the major hubs and attractions, which was a great free way to explore. There are some great activities on the island as well. You can try some of the water sports from Cat's Eye Beach. They have everything from kayaks, catamarans, or even if you just fancy snorkeling. If you want to stretch your legs, you can try one of the many hikes and trails on offer around the island. We did the Passage Peak hike, which was the highest point of the island and gave us amazing panoramic views. If you're looking for a trip which is a bit more rough and ready, then this probably isn't for you. From the moment you arrive at Hamilton Island, it definitely feels like one huge resort, especially since the majority of the island is privately owned by Hamilton Island itself. Would we still recommend coming here? Absolutely. We thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and definitely kicked back and relaxed in the sun a lot by the pool with plenty of cocktails consumed. In terms of a price point though, we did find this was more expensive than the mainland, which I guess is to be expected. Number six, Great Barrier Reef. So it's called the Great Barrier Reef for good reason. It is the largest reef in the entire world and can even be seen from space. Yes, it's also home to Disney's Finding Nemo. There are a few tour companies to choose from that depart from Ellie Beach, some smaller boutique trips and some larger vessels. We hopped on a tour with Cruise Whit Sundays. Similar to Whitehaven Beach, given the choice again, we probably would search for a smaller boat with less people on board. We got a little bit unlucky with the weather. It was pretty cloudy and rainy, so we didn't get to see those wow turquoise blues we were hoping for in the water. We were taken to Reef World, which is a floating multi-activity pontoon that sits above Hardy Reef. You were given the option of viewing the reef below deck, heading down into a semi-sub, or what we were most excited about, which was snorkeling. All the snorkeling gear and wetsuits were provided inclusive in the tour and a dedicated swim area to see the reef and the fish, which was pretty cool. So the weather hasn't really cheered up. It's, it's really quite cold, but we're gonna go in anywhere. We have to, we're here at the Great Barrier Reef. We've got our wetsuits on to protect us from the cold. There's no jellyfish, luckily, we hope. Um, so yeah, let's get in. Some of the fish were absolutely huge. If you're a keen scuba diver, this is also an option at a higher price. Snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef is definitely one of those bucket list moments. However, if you don't get the chance to visit when you are in the Whitsundays, stay tuned for further videos from us as we visit the Great Barrier Reef further up the coast in tropical North Queensland. Right, back to our list and in at number six, Ellie Beach. Guys, we have made it to Ellie Beach. And it has been about seven years since we were last here. Seven years, that is absolutely crazy because this was the first place we experienced in terms of a holiday destination when we first arrived into Australia. And now we're back this many years later. It's good to be back. Early Beach is the beating heart of the Whit Sundays and the main gateway to the islands and the Great Barrier Reef. It kind of reminds us a little bit of Byron Bay as it has the same surf vibe and lots of travelers moving through the town. There are an abundance of local surf shops, clothes shops, bars, cafes and restaurants and it can get pretty busy in the summer months so make sure you do book ahead. It is also the main place to go and book up any Whit Sunday tours whilst you are in the region. We felt a few days in Ellie Beach is plenty but definitely still worth checking out and while we are sharing things on Ellie Beach, in at number 7 is the Big Four Adventure Whit Sunday Resort. <laughs> 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 we spent a couple of nights at the Big Four Adventure Whit Sundays Resort and it was so much fun. These kind of resort style campgrounds are not usually our thing, but this one is a little bit more exciting than the usual campsite. <laughs> there is a huge pool, 13 water slides, mini golf and an adventure playground. So if you're traveling with kids, it's the perfect little getaway. Or even if you're not traveling with kids. 
<laughs> so did you enjoy being a big kid today? 100%. Why should the kids get all the fun? Not too far from the Big Four campground is a little place called Cannon Vale. It is quite often referred to as Ellie Beach's little cousin. It's only a few minutes from Ellie, but it's a lot quieter. Whilst there's nothing spectacular here, we still felt it was worth a mention as they had some really cute cafes and beaches to relax at, which sometimes is all you need for the day. We checked out a Fat Frog Cafe, which dished up some epic breakfast and coffee. The award for the fanciest <laughs> coffee goes to Alex. I don't really know what I'm doing here because I've never had it delivered like this. So give it a good stir. Oh, it smells yeah. amazing. So I'll go half. I was going to say, yeah, double shot there. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful presentation and no spoojits. Conveniently, directly opposite the cafe is Cannon Vale Beach, which is a great little spot to enjoy away from the crowds. Number nine, fruit stores. Our favourite part about moving closer to tropical North Queensland by far is the fruit stores on the side of the road and they're so cheap. $2 for an entire kilo of bananas. Take my money. <laughs> Roadside stores let you purchase what's in season directly from the farmer. It's like a mini farmer's market but way more convenient. You can just pull up on the side of the road and grab all the organic and fresh fruit and veg you want. Usually at a bargain price too. $3 for all those bananas. Can everyone tell how happy Alex is right now? Like, oh, weird. Yay! While we are on the subject of fruits, let's talk about the big mango. It's the big mango! <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bit random, but you can't drive through Bowen and not get a picture with the big mango. It's there to represent the famous Bowen mango region, which are meant to be some of the most delicious in the country. All right, tick that off the bucket list. Big, big tick. <laughs> Number 11, Bowen. Welcome to Bowen. At the very north of the Whitsundays is Bowen. We found this gorgeous little town to be a lot more relaxed than the rest of the Whitsundays. It's a great place to spend some time at the beach, go snorkeling in the crystal clear waters and check out some of the local walks nearby. We spent a couple of nights at the Whitsunday Sand Resort, which was literally seconds from the beach. Should we go check out our room? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> really this nice. is pretty nice. Look at that view. We had a gorgeous little outside area to soak up the sun, read a book and enjoy the views of the sea. Perfect, exactly what we need. Let's go explore what is to be explored. <laughs> One philosopher once said, I'm sure. And after a short 30 second walk, right here. we are at the beach. The motel is conveniently located just outside of town. And so we decided to treat ourselves to some proper Aussie pub grub at the Grand View Hotel. This hotel was actually made famous by the movie Australia with Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman. Right in for the custard. Custard is just the best. We'll try the apple pie. <laughs> A few other things you can do while in the area is check out some of the beaches by going on the Cape Edgecombe Walk track. This track will guide you along the majority of Bowen's gorgeous beaches and bays. There are huge granite boulders dotted all around which are quite iconic to Bowen's coastal landscape. The walking trail starts at Horseshoe Bay so don't make the same mistake that we did. Alex <laughs> took us all the way around here and now we're here and we have to go all the way up to here yeah. and then to here. Don't leave me in charge of locations. <laughs> oh, that is true. <laughs> Barry Bay here we and are. Horseshoe Bay, where we are actually staying, is one kilometre. And I'm pretty sure we've just walked three <laughs> from the same location, just a long way around. Oh, that is gorgeous. How clear it is as well. Quickly becoming one of my favourite parts of the Whitsun Day. And a big recommendation from us is definitely bring swimmers with you as the trail includes stops at some gorgeous spots, perfect for a little dip. The walk will take you along some various stops along the way, including the Rotary Lookout, Murray's Bay, Rose Bay, and our absolute favourite, the World War II Lookout. Whilst it was the more challenging of walks, this lookout was worth the climb to a spot once used by the army in World War II. We're nearly there. Got a bit of a sweat on. Oh, that's 
we did actually struggle to find information on this wall when researching, which is probably how we ended up walking the very long way round. But the view from the top was absolutely spectacular. We had 360 degree panoramic views over the ocean and surrounding areas. So we hope you enjoyed this video of the top things to do in the Whit Sundays. Now we know there are so many other places to see in the Whit Sundays. Some of you might be calling out to us to say, <laughs> why don't you visit this place? Please let us know in the comments below so we can come back to this place and check those places out. If you did like this video, it would mean the world to us that you could hit that like button. And if you like us, then please subscribe. See you in the next video. Ciao. So we're here for our next, so we've arrived at our next. <laughs> I'm not gonna wanna subscribe after that, are they? <laughs>